Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today we're gonna be doing a glitter rainbow swirl design. I was really inspired by this acrylic nail design that I saw on Instagram here. And I just thought it would look so cute on a tumbler. We're gonna be using alcohol inks against all one glitter color to achieve a really beautiful rainbow design. And we're also gonna do a little peekaboo action with some spray paint as well. You know I'm gonna have all the products that you see in this video listed and linked down below in the description box. You might even find some discount codes for you there as well. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. you guys so today i'm working with a 20 ounce skinny straight from craft haven i'm going to be taping off the bottom of my cup though because i don't want to finish off the bottom so i've got a silver sharpie marker that i'm just holding against my desk here turning the cup against the marker and then we're going to line up our tape along that line this is just regular black electrical tape if you don't want to tape off the bottom of your cup then you can just ignore this part of the process after taping off the bottom i did sand it real quick with an 80 grit sanding block wiped it down with some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel and now i'm just base painting it with a flat white spray paint once my spray paint was totally dry i was ready to apply my glitter i have about five milliliters of epoxy already mixed here this is a fast setting epoxy and we're just gonna spread it out like i normally would only this time we want to add a little bit more typically when i'm using epoxy as an adhesive for my glitter i will use like less than one milliliter out of the five that i'd mix there in this case we're probably going to use like three to five we might use this whole thing we want to use a little bit more because i'm using a super chunky glitter and i want that glitter to lay flat so we want to have a little more epoxy than regular i'm using moon glitter today from maestra creations glitter i have a link and a discount code for this down below in the description box and we're just going to let it rip all over the whole thing so the goal of this cup is to have some really beautiful chunky sparkly opaly white glitter underneath what will later be our colors and it's going to look like we used multiple glitter colors but really we just used one once we've got everything nice and covered i want to just kind of tap down anything that's poking out too much i'm also going to aggressively tap off the excess glitter and we're going to remove our tape from the bottom once this dries in about two hours or so remember i did use a fast setting epoxy your dry time may vary based on the brand and type of epoxy you used okay i'm going to replace that tape and today i want to use some quick coat this is a water-based urethane sealer from counterculturediy.com this is not epoxy and it's not an epoxy alternative this is just a sealer it does have some enhanced uv protection in it and stuff no, I do not know how well it compares to polycrylic because I've never compared the two. But what I do know is I've been using this stuff for years and it's never let me down. I like to apply it with a gloved hand. And the reason we're going over our chunky glitter with this sealer is it's going to help our subsequent layers of epoxy go on a little more smoothly. This is kind of like getting a, a thin base coat of epoxy without the dry time. I apply this on the turner and let it turn for about 45 minutes to an hour until it's completely dry to the touch. Then I applied two coats, I think actually three coats of epoxy over that until smooth, okay? So basically we're just applying our glitter, epoxying till smooth, and now I'm at the point where I'm ready for sanding regular sanding routine along the rim there um, really want to sand down pretty far because we will be doing some painting and inks over that once we've got everything sanded and the epoxy over our glitter is nice and smooth and i mean really smooth okay we don't want to have any bumps or ridges or anything like that okay if you have to go to four coats of epoxy to get there then do that um, but we want to make sure everything's nice and smooth now I'm moving on to my inks. 
So we're just going to apply our inks in a rainbow pattern. I have a piece of sponge or magic eraser for each color. The reason I have sponge and magic eraser is because I ran out of magic erasers. Otherwise, I would just use all that. But anyway, I'm using purple, pink, yellow, teal blue, dark blue, and I'm going to go a little bit down further on some colors than the others where I know the two colors meeting together will create a third color. For example, with the pink and the yellow, I wanna go down a little further with the pink and go down a little further with the yellow because the pink and yellow, when they mix together, will create the orange for us. And I'm gonna go down a little further with that yellow because the yellow and teal will create the green for us, okay? Notice that I'm not really putting forth a huge amount of effort to blend here. I'm just kind of putting the colors on willy-nilly. What we do wanna see is a nice clear separation of each color. I want like, I don't want so much of a gradient. I just really am looking for like a rainbow here. I don't know. But what I love about this technique is it kind of looks like we have a bunch of different glitter colors on here with just one. You'll also notice I'm not using a lot of rubbing alcohol for blending. I did that on purpose because I don't want like a splotchy look. I mean, ideally, if I knew how to use like an airbrush with these alcohol inks, I probably would have done that just to get a really nice clean blend between all the colors. Um, but we're going to be covering up a good amount of this with some paint later on. So I'm not really too concerned. I just don't want things to look like blotchy. Once I got to the end here, I forgot that I probably should have replaced my tape because <laughs> I don't want any alcohol ink going past what was our glitter line. Again, if you finish off your bottom for this, you can just ignore that part of the instruction. But it's pretty self-explanatory what we're doing here. We're just creating a rainbow with alcohol inks and trying to blend the colors in between. If somewhere got a little too like blotchy or build up, I just went over it with a small bit of rubbing alcohol to kind of blend that out. Once I was done applying the inks, I did let that dry overnight. I did not seal my inks. And now I'm just going over this with a very light coat of epoxy. If you are not finishing your bottom like I am, uh, just make sure after you apply this coat of epoxy that you go over the bottom to wipe off any excess epoxy from where it should not be. Or you could just replace the tape before you epoxy and then remove it as soon as you're done applying your epoxy. <laughs> after that dried, I'm ready to start sanding down my rim once again. Remember earlier I told you guys you're gonna have to sand more than once uh, with this type of design because we're doing glitter and some paint and inks and we want to make sure that that top rim is nice and clean so our final coats of epoxy have something to adhere to to create the final seal for our cup on the outer rim rather than the very top rim where it's more vulnerable. After sanding, I'm just gonna wipe this down with some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. And if you found that you sanded down too far and exposed some of the white glitter underneath, just color that in with a Sharpie. Next, we're going to apply our vinyl and our tape to the areas that we wanna leave exposed after we paint. So we're gonna create kind of like some stenciling going on here. I've created uh, this decal, which was the offset layer of her name that I created in Cricut Design Space. And we're just going to apply that first. This is just regular Oracal 651 vinyl. If you're more comfortable using stenciling vinyl, use that. We're just going to measure twice, so we only have to cut once. We wanna make sure everything's nice and centered and straight. And I'll just apply this like I normally would using like the hinge method. Once I've got the offset layer of that name applied, we're going to apply our tape stripe. Using half inch masking tape, I'm gonna start with my first line up here at the top. 
Remember, everywhere that we're taping off will remain sparkly and rainbow colored. Everywhere we're not taping off will be painted white. I want to get this first line really straight because this is going to set the tone for all the subsequent stripes. But once I get that first line taped, and I'm sure it's nice and straight, I'm going to use two little spacer pieces of tape on either end of my cup here to give me a reference point to how to space the next stripe so it's nice and straight. I'm going to repeat this process all the way down the cup until we have all of our lines taped. <laughs> all right, notice that the half inch tape really works out well for a cup this size because we're going to end up with a nice even amount of stripes all the way down. You really want to be sure that you get these lined out nicely with no kind of overlaps or anything weird going on because we won't be adding vinyl lines to fix any of this later on. You could add vinyl lines later to fix anything if you wanted to, but I really like the look of the clean white stripes for this particular design. After I got all the tape laid down, I just went around to make sure everything was nice and smoothed out and adhered well. And then I spray painted this with a flat white spray paint. I'm using Color Shots Matte Head in the Clouds white for this. You may need to do two light coats to get solid coverage. Remember, it's better to do extra light coats than it is to do one heavy, drippy, messed up coat. <laughs> After spraying this, I let it dry for about 10 minutes or so. It's about 85 degrees in my shop right now, so the paint dried pretty quick. And now I'm ready to remove all of my stripes and decals. Be careful not to scratch any of the paint when you're doing this. You also don't want your paint to be bone dry before you do this because if it's super dry, you can risk pulling up some of the paint with that tape. Be really careful when you're pulling up that name decal that you don't scratch any of your paint, but if you do, it's not a big deal. Just grab your white acrylic paint marker and fill in any kind of mess up. Additionally, if you have any mess ups on your stripes from your spray paint where the paint might have seeped into the tape, just grab a paintbrush and some acetone and you can clean those up really quickly. Next, I'll be adding in her name. So in Cricut Design Space, what you'll want to have is three different cuts. You're going to do the original name in white vinyl, then you have the full offset layer, then we have the layer where we offset twice and sliced in between all right so what i did for outlining the name with the opal vinyl which you'll see later is we first did the name tegan in just the regular varsity font then i created an offset around that after i created the offset around that which was a very thin offset i created an offset around the offset which is what we used for stenciling earlier. And then I sliced the first offset with the second offset. So we would have an outline around what would normally be just a single offset. I hope that all makes sense. <laughs> Here I am just touching up with my acrylic white marker on some of the parts where that paint got a little bit messed up. You want to take some of the sticky off of your transfer tape before you transfer your name. If you're not confident that you could transfer your vinyl without messing up those paint lines, go ahead and put a light coat of epoxy over your paint lines first before applying your decals. But this particular transfer tape isn't all that sticky and if you run your hands against it once or twice, it'll take enough of the sticky off to where it really should not pull up that paint. When I transfer the offset for the name, I try to do it in pieces. So the way this offset ended up being is it cut in three separate pieces, okay? In other words, only three parts of it were totally connected. So I could transfer it onto the cup bit by bit, which was a lot easier than trying to line up the whole thing. I hope that makes sense. So here I am just putting on the A and the N at one time. Once I get this transferred, I'll move on to just the G because that cut in one separate piece. And then the TEA all cut in one piece 
and I transferred that at once as well. So it just makes it easier for me than trying to line this whole thing up at once. Once I finished up with all of that vinyl and paintwork, I was finally ready to move on to my final coats of epoxy. This one took two final coats before it was totally done, and that was it. So that's it for this tutorial. I absolutely love how this turned out. And while I don't think it's just like the inspiration that I saw with the acrylic nails, I really love it. I love the mix of kind of like that tie-dye rainbow with the clean preppy look of the stripes and the varsity font. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. And if you like this video, please be sure to give us a big Big thumbs up and if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel I upload new videos every Saturday thank you so much for watching I'll see you again soon big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.